So how many of you all have seen the rural Nebraska wave? You know, the one finger, maybe two above the steering wheel when you pass somebody on the road? <laughs> I've really come to enjoy this. You know why? It allows me to create a brief high-speed connection with another person. <laughs> But when I came to Lincoln, wow, with all the cars I was passing, my finger was wearing out just trying to keep up. I think I found a solution. My friend Amy gave me this. I think I can duct tape this to my phone. Maybe write an app to have the camera detect oncoming cars. Somehow create the ultimate, ultimate automatic waving machine. I think I've just used technology to continue building so many more high-speed connections with folks. <laughs> think about the light bulb for a minute. This was one of our greatest achievements in our history. We often think of Thomas Edison as the innovator behind it. But like any great achievement in our country, it's always the result of so many people taking an innovative thought or product and turning it into the achievement it is. Now come with me to the year 1935, when only one in 10 rural households had access to electricity. We often think of our own Senator George Norris as seeing the value in bringing light to rural America. But behind his vision, it was many more that, than him that made it happen. There were the neighbors, and then the communities that came together to form electric cooperatives. People came together and shared knowledge and created an infrastructure, created this concept and then an infrastructure that eventually led to every rural American having access to affordable electricity. The rural electric system was not driven by directive, but rather it was built by the folks who desperately wanted this technology. And they leaned on the ingenious ideas of many other folks all over the country they had ownership in the system. This was not done for profit. It was done for the sheer purpose of seeing our rural American communities thrive and grow. Senator Norris's innovative thought and the resulting achievement became a foundation to our national success. Now come with me to an area where you can view a pristine sunrise. Maybe you're surrounded by abundant wildlife roaming free. You look out and you see open roads without traffic. You might step out on your porch and not see another soul. You can actually hear silence. This is the lifestyle I get to enjoy every single day that I live in rural Nebraska. But there's a challenge, a trade-off. Like in the days prior to 1935 with the limited opportunities of not having electricity, I worry that again today this high-tech world may be leaving our ability to enjoy this lifestyle behind. Do you realize up to 40% of rural Americans don't have access to affordable broadband internet? Compared with only 4% in our urban areas? This is creating kind of a digital poverty. To keep pace with the rest of society, we as a country are need to going to help ensure that this is going to be available to our breadbasket. My friend Chris just purchased a new combine. Where Chris sits resembles more of a cockpit out of a fighter jet than that of a tractor. Autonomous steering allows Chris to have his laptop and other digital devices in front of him during the harvest. He's collecting data from every square foot that he's harvesting. He's merging it with other data and other images. He might be working on his marketing plan or how he might improve that little area of the field next year. Chris is also turning on and off irrigation systems at other fields all over the area. He's maximizing his time, his water, and his energy efficiency. Chris has access to broadband, not only to his home, but to his cockpit and to all his fields. Dave is another one of my friends. Dave worked for a large engineering firm, but became tired of the urban life. So you know what he did? He moved out of the city, but yet he was able to continue working for his firm. He video conferences, collaborates with colleagues all over the world, 
and does almost everything he was able to do from the office. But now he can do it from the comfort of his quiet, rural home. And he was able to afford a nicer house as a bonus. Dave has access to broadband at his rural home. However, infrastructure is expensive, and technology rapidly changes. This is a real disincentive for companies to serve such sparsely populated areas. For example, if someone were to mimic our electric lines in western Nebraska and run a fiber optic cable to every rural house, the cost would be nearly $40,000 per home. Not quite an affordable option. And maybe not the best long-term option to provide all the opportunities that broadband can. Many of us choose to live out here. It shouldn't be a trade-off. In 2015, Nebraska agriculture alone contributed $23 billion to our state's economy. Our success as a state has created a super low unemployment rate, which has translated into the need to expand the geographic areas for our workforce. Rural Nebraska, and in general, rural America, continue to be a foundation to our nation's economy. Like electricity, like transportation, a robust communication infrastructure is going to be a necessity if we're going to continue competing in this global economy. So I graduated from college in 1995, and I decided I wanted to come back to this tranquility. But there was a problem. I had gotten used to the internet. Guess what? They didn't follow me. I had started to see the opportunities that the internet could provide, not only for me, but for my community. I didn't know how to bring this technology to my little corner. I didn't even know if it was going to be possible. But you know what? My dad and I got together and we formed a group to tackle this challenge. Through some creative partnerships, some steep learning, and a ton of borrowed ideas from other folks, I got dial-up internet to my house. <laughs> and we made it available to every other home and business in our community. But I kind of feel like I'm in a deja vu moment. Seems like I'm right back where I started 22 years ago, really trying to find people to come together in both the rural and the urban areas to tackle this problem. But I think this time we should rely a little bit more on what we learned during the lighting of rural America and apply it to today's challenge. I think we should call this barn raising broadband. Neighbors coming together to build an infrastructure to help another neighbor, bringing affordable broadband internet to all homes and businesses. For all of us, this is going to take true innovation and it's gonna be a monumental task. The economics to support the current technology are greater than any one company or any one solution. Technology infrastructure is the best investment we can make in tomorrow's rural sustainability. Making lives better to access to broader economies and more ideas can make it more attractive to live in rural America. Just not too many more of you, though. <laughs> better use of our time and our energy can make our resources go so much farther. Some rural areas have accomplished this successfully. Even companies like Microsoft and Google see the value in making this happen. We've even partnered with companies in our area for our own communication needs and expanded coverage as a result. But to make this happen for everyone, it is going to take true leaders with this passion in every community to step forward and get it started. It doesn't have to be just your traditional companies, although it could be. It could be your electric utility. It could be a startup. It could even be a company like Google. In most cases, I think it's going to need a partnership between all of them to make it happen. Since the urban areas rely so heavily on the success of our rural areas, urban areas should lend themselves to be part of this solution as well. Maybe there are things that are working in your community that might work in ours. Maybe we can look at other industries and create a new approach. Maybe 
we can pull all of our infrastructure in a region and share in the costs, but also share in the benefits and create a system with the economies of scale to gain the most efficient use. The technology and the infrastructure to support this is a moving target. And the challenges are going to be unique in each community. But this is a target worth shooting for. Our, because our communities matter. And the people in rural America matter. Rural Americans are some of the most innovative folks around. Yet we often ignore the potential of these thinkers to change the world as we know it. We leave so much on the table, untouched and unexplored because this critical population of thinkers don't have access. Whether you're in rural Nebraska, or rural California, or rural New York, when people come together with the sole purpose of building something that can make somebody else's life better, great solutions will result. And in this case, we can bring affordable broadband to everyone who wishes it. Driving these foundations can make stronger and more resilient communities. By providing opportunities such as the folks who've built the rural electric system have done over the past 80 years, we can continue making rural America thrive. We can create a historic achievement. And you know what? We'll all be better for this. Together, we can make this happen. Not only for us today, but for everyone, including our kids tomorrow. We can prevent this digital poverty from becoming established. Thank you.